Welcome, everyone. Uh, actually, welcome to our very first uh, Lunch and Launch. We are beyond excited to share with everyone here our, our latest feature and really how Property Meld is yet again raising the standard of property maintenance. Um, jumping right into it, I want to get things kicked off here uh, and introduce our CEO and co-founder, Mr. Ray Hespin. Uh, Ray, can you just walk us all through kind of the why behind uh, the launch of this powerful feature? So, so first of all, I, I'm really thankful that Madison uh, addressed why Anna Torby was everyone, uh, because I was about to walk over to her desk and be like, what the hell are you doing? Like, like what's going on? So thank you for that. And thanks, John, for kicking it off. You know, I'm a big, uh, I've become, as I've become a bit more uh, focused, just kind of in operations and it, just anything of why we do anything. I've actually gotten really keen into like, why are we doing this and why did we pick this now? So at Property Meld, we ultimately have a vision of how maintenance should be. We call it the level five experience. It's what is ultimately going to create the best cost outcome, the best owner retention, the best resident experience. We've kind of got that defined. You can't do that all in one go. Just like the autonomous driving car, you can't just say, here we go from my Chevy uh, Geo Metro. Uh, to uh, the Tesla driving car. You got these steps in between. And so if you think about where Property Meld has come from, we're a company that really started to say, hey, let's make the resident experience better. Let's improve communication. Let's improve oversight. And I would like to think we've made very meaningful movements in driving that as an, as a, in the industry. And so many of you who notice this, uh, things like being able to say, what's going on? Where's the status? What, what kind of communications happen? When has it been scheduled? How happy is the resident? Those are all things that are available now that weren't historically, even five years ago, right? And so if we think about that next iteration of what property management looks like, it's like, all right, <clears throat> how do we take the next set of problems and go out and solve those? So the big things we keep hearing in the industry often happen to do with things like, uh, how do I get more out of my team members? How do I make sure and execute on these particular fringe cases that are massively um, causing financial pain? We've kind of looked and pointed our, our, our next set, set of problems to solve really in the realm of taking and making sure that people do something automatically every time without fail. So that way team members can focus on the things, the soft skills that need to happen. So that is why we ultimately launched this workflows engine. It was in demand of what the customers and the problems that, that our customers were dealing with. And it's how can we solve those next set of problems that are gonna take the maintenance, not just from oversight, but starting to be to that point where it's like, this is a machine. This is the strongest part of my organization. And so that's why we that's why we put emphasis and focus on uh, the workflows engine that I'm incredibly excited that we get to uh, talk through and announce today. Thank you for that, Ray. And you know, if I'm being totally transparent here, um, in my tenure in prop tech, uh, I have never seen a feature um, in any capacity with this with the kind of potential impact that that workflows has. Uh, I'm sure everybody in the office around here is really tired of me running around. I'm like a kid in a candy store, jacked up on it and, and uh, constant meetings with, with, with customers. Then I'm sure they just go, God, this guy, is he on drugs or what's going on here? But really, the, the, the potential impact here is just awesome. Um, in that tenure, you know, I've worked with hundreds of property management companies over the years. And there's always common threads, right? Like, Garbage disposal, for instance, bane of existence, uh, I'm sure for a lot of you, if not all of you. But what if I told you that you, that that could be a meld for you that completed itself. You didn't have to touch. That's what we're talking about here. Um, a, a beautiful example of this, and I was uh, talking with one of our beta customers uh, that was on workflows here uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they hit me with a really, like, kind of a mind-blowing statistic. Uh, she said 68% of all of their garbage disposal work orders can avoid having a vendor being sent out if they're just troubleshot correctly. This is, you know, 
something, these are analytics that they didn't have prior to property meld a year ago, that now they have these analytics, you know, kind of V1. Now here we are, and Carol and her team uh, working with implementing a, a workflow for um, automatically troubleshooting a garbage disposal. She doesn't have to lift a finger, and it's been an absolute game changer for them and, and you know, saving them even more time. Speed to repair, it's even more. It, it's, it's become pretty amazing what, what they've been able to accomplish. Um, <clears throat> you know, yes, there are common threads with, every, with property management companies, but each and every one of you are also very unique, right, in, in your own problem sets. Um, like one thing that we have been obsessing about here is owner retention, you know, your clients. And so if you really think about your clients, for instance, some need white glove treatment, right? Some are so hands off, the most time consuming part of the repair is actually getting that, that owner approval, right? Well, good news. You can create a workflow for that now. Uh, a customer, a, a new customer that we, uh, I was working with here just last week, uh, told me they had just over 400 individual owners and they cater to each and every one of those individual owners from uh, their not to exceeds and the amount of man, like man hours that had to be vested in doing this was consuming them. Well, now with workflows, their team doesn't have to spend hours a day accomplishing this they're literally spending minutes. Like, again, just what the power can be behind, behind workflows. So, all right, I need to get off my soapbox. Like I said, everybody's probably annoyed with this already. So, but uh, um, I'm going to hand this over to Nate uh, for the real reason you are all here, minus the free lunch for some of you. But uh, um, I do wanna say this is the opportunity for you all to pull up property mail. Um, you can build alongside with Nate if you want, kind of see where these things are at. And with that, without further ado, Mr. Nate. Sweet. Thanks, John. I, uh, I think I have the, uh, the most fun part of this webinar because I get to show you how it works. So, um, so if you, like John said, if you're in your property mail account and you want to follow along, um, what I'm going to do is walk through two templates that we have already created. And then I'm going to walk through a few use cases, like John was saying, that are very specific, that could be very specific to your company, right? Just showing the flexibility and the power of these workflows. So if you're in your property meld account, you're going to find it under melt. And I get really excited about this, just like John talking to our customers. So John, if I start going way too fast, you can just wave at me to slow down because I really want everyone to like get it and get it well. All right. So if, if I can stay on track, anybody can stay on track. Okay. okay. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So I'm going to start here under uh, workflows. So you go to melds and then go to workflows. If this is the first time that you're signing, uh, coming into this new uh, section of the, of your property meld account, you'll get a brief message that says, all right, uh, this is what workflows is. You can create a workflow from scratch straight from there or see templates. Since I've already created some in this account, it took me here and defaulted to workflows that I have turned on as well as ones that I've created. So what I want to do first is go to templates. And so this is one that we recommend right now that you turn on. Okay. We know the value of, you know, getting work orders processed, processed quickly. And this one is a very common place where we find a lot of our customers get stuck is they assign a meld out to a vendor and it just kind of sits there. And so the idea with this workflow is to say, Hey, how can we get that to move along? And part of it is just honestly, genu genuinely getting it back in your hands. So it sits there for 72 hours and then it unassigns it from, um, from that vendor. So before we kind of get too far into the weeds with these, because I really want to get a couple, get very specific, I want to show you kind of the three basic components of the workflow. So obviously you have the name, but here you have the trigger. So this is an event that takes place inside of property meld, inside your account that um, will trigger this workflow to start. Okay, so you can see the list here. Again, if you're in your account, you can kind of start reading through these and kind of get an idea of what these are. So in this case, we're assigning a meld. The next component is the conditions. So you actually don't have to have a condition. You can leave this blank if you want to go straight to the action, but 
generally you're going to have a condition or two or three or four, right? If you really want to get very complicated. But in this case, it's a condition the vendor's assigned. There's a time component to that. It can be changed. And then the final piece of these um, workflows, property level workflows are the action. And this is where it actually does something inside the system. So um, tags, assigning melds, it's pretty robust. There's going to be more actions, more conditions coming later on, but this is where we're at right now. Uh, a key one that we're going to talk about here in a minute is sending templates. So if you're in your account, like I said, click this workflow on, hit create, and you're good to go. Any meld that's assigned that to a vendor that is not uh, accepted by the vendor in 72 hours will be unassigned, come right back to you so you can deal with it. All right. So next, I want to take you to the invoice to the template that says um, requested invoice from a vendor after 24 hours. So I'm going to click into this one. This one's a little more specific, again, to, you know, that vendor experience. And we know not everyone on the call, you know, uses third-party vendors. But one thing that I know that from talking to customers as part of my job here at Property Melt is talking to customers every single day, just like you. And this is one where I, I think if you drop in the chat, I'd love to know how many of you have ever chased down a, an invoice from a vendor, you know, and it's probably most of you. And I, I just like looking through the different times that I've like talked to customers and it's like so many times this is a pain point and this is something that can cost you money. And honestly, the vendor wants to be paid too, right? So it's in their best interest to give you this invoice, but it happens. And so this is a great one, a great example of just something that you maybe have been doing already in your property mail account, doing follow-up, trying to track down this invoice from a vendor that the system can now do for you. So as I said, there's a trigger. In this case, the meld is completed. Um, we have a vendor assigned to it and there's a slight delay. So again, if you're following along, this is a template that's already there. There's 13 templates built into the system already with more to come. Um, and so the idea behind those templates are to kind of take it and be as simple as I came in here, you saw me, I clicked into the template and now I'm gonna choose a uh, chat template. So the only thing I have to do to create this property mail workflow template is to create, uh, is to choose from my chat templates that I already have in the system. So in this case, I'm looking for my vendor no invoice chat template. So I've already gone into the system. I've created that ch chat template. I know exactly what it says. Hey vendor, thank you so much for completing this uh, meld. Would you please uh, submit an invoice? As simple as that. All right, so I've, accept, I've uh, chosen that chat template. Again, turning it on. I'd love for you all to do this if you're in your account already. Hit create. Now this workflow is active and ready to go. All right, so here's the fun part. Just a reminder too, if you are asking questions in the chat, John, I think, and Liz are going to try to get to those at the end once we get, once we get finished here. Um, just if there's any like very specific use cases or questions that you have about what these, um, what the workflow can do. And so I want to jump in and create one quickly. And Liz too is going to drop our contact info because again, if you have questions and you're like, I want to know specifically for my company, what I can do. That's what I've been doing all this past week with my customers is saying, okay, what's specific to you and your company and how do we make a workflow help you? There's a workflow for that kind of a silly little catch phase we got. So um, now I'm going to create one. That's a little bit more. Am I going too fast, John? Am I good? I think we're, we're doing all right. Okay. Everybody, all right. Um, you know, Alejandra, I, I hear, I heard you a little bit. She uh, asked just a quick, she wanted to hear more about kind of the, the uh, automating the message templates and yeah, um, sky's the limit, Alejandra, which is really awesome. You know, the templates that you're already using in the chat feature in property mode, these are going to translate over there's so just to kind of briefly quick do that, but perfect. No, I think that's a great point. And, and thanks for bringing that up, John, because I think there's, yeah, you're, you're already have those in there and it's just pulling from that. So if you want to, you go to into your account settings and then go to templates and that's where you can add or change any of your chat templates you already have. And these workflow templates are going to pull from that. So, yep. Perfect. Point. Yeah. And Perfect. Liz just uh, um, chatted in there too. Uh, she chatted in there the um, contact for the success managers. So absolutely I can't stress it enough. Please reach out. You guys were here. They're here. I shouldn't say we are <laughs> yeah. in trouble if I'm the one helping, but, uh, but no, um, they, they're, they're ready to help and, and are going to be a wealth of knowledge for you guys to help you out. So sweet. So another one that I want to go through is one that John was just talking about in terms of triaging. So we understand that people spend a lot of time, um, you know, 
using those chat templates very efficiently, very effectively in Property Meld already. But as John was describing, there's an opportunity here to have a uh, meld, a work order that you potentially don't even have to touch. Okay. So what a great example is right here. If you can see on my screen, I have this, this is a template again, auto reply with triage when a garbage disposal meld is created. So if I'm going to click in here and I just want to show you, this is going to be the last one I create from a template, but I just wanted to show you just the power of what this can do. Because like John was saying, um, and I was thinking through, through a scenario of maybe I'm the property manager or the maintenance coordinator and I go out to lunch and a garbage disposal uh, meld comes in while I'm at lunch. Typically I have to go in, I have to send the chat template and then that communication happens and maybe it's an hour or two later before actually I determine that I do need to send a technician or a vendor out, or I can just close the melt. In this case, I'm out to lunch, the melt is created, the melt category is garbage disposal and the creator type is tenant. So that means none of my internal users have created this. Um, so again, three components of the workflow. We have the trigger, the conditions, and then in this case, once again, we're using that chat template. So if you're in your meld account, again, the only thing you have to do is a lot of you probably already have a garbage disposal uh, triage chat template. So what I'm going to do here is create it, uh, take it from that and put it in here. So now, again, I have this chat, this template, this workflow chat template that has gone from a uh, meld is created. It's a garbage disposal issue and it sends out a chat template related to the garbage disposal. I'm flipping it on. I'm hitting create. And like John said, in this case. There's a potential here that I come back from lunch and this meld is essentially done because the tenants actually sent me a chat message back and says, hey, actually it worked, no problem. So as a manager, my only thing I have to do is mark it as completed. So this is again, where we're trying to find ways, how do we streamline your process, help you save time? And because I know a lot of you, like I said, I'm talking to so many customers every single day, you guys are busy. I always tell my customers, it sounds like you have a very, very difficult job. And so we wanna make your life so much easier with these workflows. And so just a head, also a heads up, if you are a legacy customer and you tried to turn this on and you've been following it along, you probably did get a warning message because you are limited to two. And so if you want to hear more information from us and the success team in terms of getting upgraded to unlimited workflows, again, like John said, our contact info is in the chat or, you know, you probably know, you know, I know a lot of my customers are on this call. You can reach out to me via email. So, all right. So, so that's the last yeah. template. Yeah, go ahead. Real quick, a uh, couple questions that were kind of coming through here yeah. for, um, there was one that was for the first template that you did. Okay. Uh, is there a way to add another action? So the answer Ooh, is yes. Question. Can you just yep. kind of elaborate on that a little bit? For sure. For sure. So the first one I did was the request under invoice. But regardless, yes, that's a great question. So um, three components. Trigger, condition, action, definitely. I was actually gonna show this on my next one, but it, I'm glad you brought it up. What I do is I go to the bottom here, I can add a workflow block. And what that allows me to do is to choose another condition, which I don't have to, I can leave that blank, but I also have the option to choose another action. So in this case, maybe I wanna send a uh, message internally as well, or I want to, um, tag it because I know a lot of our customers use tags. And so if you're not a customer, you don't know what a tag is, no problem. Basically, it's just a way to segment out your work order and separate it out. So things that are, are important are coming to the surface. So in this case, I, let's say I want to add a tag that I could then filter and use. And I'm going to put here, I don't know if I have tags. I'll just put my above and TE. But as an example, yeah, that's an action. So I can have two actions that take place after the conditions are met for the workflow. Yeah. So, yeah. So to the, to the question, they, they just kind of, um, I know it's not Anna. So, but uh, <laughs> the, the follow-up question were, it was, I want to send a, a template to the tenant saying that the vendor did not reply on time. So we'll be assigning a new one or something. Uh, yep. 100%. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Yep. 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 And so step one is to get that chat template into your account. And then from here, um, you could most definitely um, send a message. So, hey, Vanessa, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, now we so know. I, All right, it's Vanessa. It's Vanessa. Oh, okay, she's mad. <laughs> That's a great, great question, Vanessa. So, what I wanted to do as like the next step um, is I wanted to show just creating a workflow from scratch. So, again, like I said, we have 13 templates. And the idea behind that is we know that it can be a little intimidating to just start from scratch and, and really, okay. Cause the sky's the limit, but it's almost like, honestly, with me, with Apple music, I have unlimited music I can listen to. And I pull up my phone and I'm like, 
I don't know what to listen to, right? So it's gonna be a little overwhelming. So I'm like, okay, so the chat template, I mean, the, the property meld workflow templates are gonna be a great place to start, but we know you need to get super granular. So I'm gonna create a template from scratch just to kind of show a little bit of kind of the, all right, what's specific to me? So in this case, I'm a property manager. I have an owner that has a very specific not to exceed. And like John was alluding to, a um, little high touch, maybe white glove, not a problem, right? I just want to be able to um, show him, you know, quickly respond to an event. And the event here is an invoice is submitted that goes above that not to exceed. So I, as a property manager, am instantly notified as soon as that invoice comes in that goes above, in this case, John's my owner. And I, I, I then am able to respond quickly and efficiently and, and quickly reach out to that vendor or reach out to that owner and, and it figure the whole issue out. So in this case, I'm creating it from scratch. I gave it a title. In this case, owner not to exceed. John's my owner. The trigger is the invoice is being submitted. All right. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to, in this case, I want to know, I don't have any internal technicians. So I want it to be uh, a vendor has given me this invoice. So this would be something actually that I just realized I didn't show you all how to do. In this case, it's gonna to default to one condition. How you add a second condition is you just hit this little plus button and it gives you the option to add a second condition. If I decide not to, I can always hit that minus, okay? So with the templates, with the conditions already preloaded, it may or may not be super obvious. And that's why I wanna make, click that plus. Now I want to figure out the, uh, where are we at? Invoice amount. So now in this case, I want it to be greater or equal to, let's say $501. So my not to exceed for John owner is $500. So an invoice is submitted by a vendor that comes in at a $501 or above. Instantly, it sends a message to my team. And this is where I have an owner not to exceed template that it's going to go to my internal team and say, hey, we need to check on this invoice. But, and this is where I think it was Vanessa's question, where now I also want to send, uh, I also want to tag it. So in this case, I want to add that not to exceed tag because I want it to pop up in a filter so that I can instantly see that this is an issue. Okay. So maybe I missed the message. It's just kind of another layer of like, this is what's going to happen. I need to respond to this immediately. So Invoice is submitted by a vendor that's over that not to exceed of $500. It sends a message internally to my team and also tags it all automatically turned on create. How's that for you, John? I mean, that's way too high of a not to exceed for me personally. I mean, <laughs> 150, but whatever. <laughs> all right, cool. Any other questions, John? Did you see pop up that you wanted to, you wanted to address real quick before I did my last one? Um, so um, let me just take a look here. Um, I'll get this loaded well, the up work here. here's one. Okay. Um, will the workflow um, include only the new incoming mails, or will include the open ones? So the example is: if I want to follow up with with vendors that haven't sent in their invoices, will this workflow include the older melds or only to the new ones? Therefore, I think is what they're saying. Yep. Yep. I, I will not build it here just because it'll be a little more complicated, but the answer is yes. So in this case, it, for example, the trigger event could be the meld is assigned and then we could delay it by say a week and then look back within that last week if certain events have taken place. So that would happen in the condition. So I would delay this. Um, and again, I won't get too far into this, but I think it's a great question. So maybe I would delay this by a week. So this meld is assigned. Um, a great example would be, again, the uh, we would assign it to a vendor. So Mel assigned, present. So, and then we'll vendor, it delays for a week. And then I can add some conditions here where maybe it hasn't been scheduled. There's no schedule date. Uh, there's no completion date. And then it sends out a message internally or to the vendor. I think that answers that question. Yes. Perfect. Cool. Thank yeah. You. So totally doable. Yeah. Um, question, can you... Um, walk us through, but maybe we can just kind of talk through um, making a workflow to request appliance model and serial numbers when a new meld comes in for a repair. So Nate, tell me if I'm off here. My, my thought was, abs well, one, absolutely. Um, but you can have, if an appliance repair, you know, a, a, a meld for an appliance comes in, you can yep. have a workflow that kicks out 
a text message back to that resident asking them to take a picture of the model serial number sticker 100%. on the inside. I mean, yep. something super easy like that um, yep. was kind of, there you go. Yep, and we actually have a template already in the system for that right here. So we'll create Love that it. here, SIDS, appliances, any of creator type tenant. And then, like you said, we'll have a message that we have in our chat templates that we create that, that we can pull from that asks them to send us that picture or that information, just like that. You got it. It's a great question. All right. So another example, any other quick questions, John, before I do my final one? The last do- one, Kay, uh, wanted to know, can, do we have an, a sample for an owner approval template? Well, let's see. Do we have owner approval? I don't think we have it in the templates. I don't think we do yet. No. Nope. Yep. But definitely something that we can, you can build a, a workflow around is owner approvals. Um, if you look under conditions, there's an owner approval comment, owner, owner approval completion date, dollar amount, request date. So that's a great question. Um, I would say if you're a property mail customer already and you haven't been following along, pull up your account, get into the workflows. And honestly, if you just want to start going through these conditions and start looking through some, what are some ways, again, what are some use cases for me personally in my company that I could use these for? And then, you know, there's more conditions coming, but I think with what we have so far, there's, it's going to, you're going to be hard pressed not to find a way to do that in a workflow for sure. All right. So let me, and we can come back, John, I'll do my final one and then we can come back Absolutely. and answer any questions. So um, in this case, um, I had, I had a customer ask me about like a one word answer that a vendor gives her specifically, or a, a tenant that's notoriously putting in a mouth that is just like this key word. And so she's like, I want to create a workflow around that. So that is so granular. Obviously we would never create a template for that, but she was, a, she was convinced that I wouldn't be able to do it. And I'm like, Oh no, you totally. So just so you know, we can do it based on the brief description. And this is where I wanted to show you for this last one. So Um, In this, in this case, um, I'm going to make a workflow that's very personal to me. So I've been chasing down a coworker of mine, uh, trying to get him to go to lunch with me. He's always ghosting me, won't go. So I'm going to create a workflow. So Mel just created. So one of the conditions, what I want is for the um, creator type to be internal. So this is a great, again, all joking aside, just another great way to see like I can do any of, and then you can choose the type of the person. So in this case, it's going to be internal persons creating it. So maybe there's workflows that you only want to be related to melds that you're creating as a property manager or melds that are created by the tenant. So this is a great condition that I think should be used a lot. So internal creation, the meld brief description. So this is where it's kind of fun because again, it could be super specific lunch question mark. Hey, you coming out? Um, And then I'm going to send a message, lunch with John. So in this case, again, it's the brief description that it's taking. And I can add other keywords to this if I want. Or I can even look at, and I won't go into it just now, but I can even look at what words have been sent in the chat also. And that I, I, when I did that with that customer specifically, she was super pumped because there's a specific keyword that I'm looking for that would then have an action that is, uh, that happens after that specific message comes in solved. All right. So I'm going to send this, uh, I'm going to create this workflow here, turn it on, create. I'm already in my melds page. I'm going to create a meld right here for me real quick. You guys are all very familiar with this. And remember that brief description needs to be lunch question mark location, not the bathroom. That's weird. (laughs) Uh, We'll just say living room and then whatever and create meld. So my uh, colleague of who has been, I've been chasing down, get a text message now from the chat function. And uh, I don't know if, if that's you, John, if you happen to get a message, maybe you could read it out for oh, us. I just got a text message. Hey, John, can we get lunch at Arby's? <laughs> it would be awkward for you to say no in front of all of these people. Your future BFF, Nate. So what, what do you say? Just not Arby's, man. <laughs> okay, all right, deal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. So um, questions, anything else, John, you think that we can uh, go before we kind of transition? Um, let's just go take a look here really quick. They do have the meats, don't they, at Arby's? They do. They do. They do. <laughs> 
And I, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful. I just want to sort of go back to the beginning and basically say, I'm hopeful that for those, those of our customers that are on this call, that you feel confident to turn on these workflows, but you also have the confidence to just really see or understanding the value behind what this can do for your process, right? You alluded to it, John, right? This, this could be game changing yeah. for a ton of people. I don't know, you know, you know, also that it's like, we have so many customers where they're working from home. They're a one man show or one woman show, and they have 600 units and, and what this can do for them on their, in their day-to-day life, you know? Yep, exactly. Yeah. So question here from Eric in Jacksonville, I'm using a third-party AP um, accounts payable service to collect and handle my invoices. Can I create a workflow that automatically sends meld invoice attachments via email to this third-party AP team? The answer is no, because, you know, again, we're looking at what we can do inside of property meld. So what I would say is you could have certain, you know, you could, again, tag it, create a chat that essentially is an internal process for you that would, you know, maybe trigger something for as a team, you know, have your using your process. Um, but in terms of getting things happening outside of meld, obviously, you know, the answer is unfortunately no. But I think there's some ways to leverage workflow to keep things, again, like I was saying, we want to surface things to the top, keep those high priority things up. And I think uh, workflows can really help with that. So. Um, next question here, Nate, um, I was questioning why I don't have the option of adding a workflow and the help section said that it is only an admin function. My assigned role is a broker. So that means it isn't an option. Period. Oh, no. So if you're, so for those meld users on the call, um, you know, that we have three, uh, roles that are just automatically put into the system, right? Um, admin, agent, maintenance. So the workflows are, are available by default to the admin and the agent, but it sounds like in this case, that person has a custom role um, and it probably is not in there because it wasn't an option when that custom role was created. So simple as having whoever's an admin on that account going into that custom role and adding it, adding that functionality essentially to that custom role, but very straightforward, very easy. Yeah. Perfect. And so, uh, Richard, can the workflow response be personalized? Um, yes. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that uh, um, that text message, and I know you guys can't read it, but it actually says that it came from Nate. But Nate, can you elaborate or, you know, uh, just kind of clarify it? Is it who's sending it? Is it who last created the template? Just what name is actually showing up? I've seen that question come across a couple of times here. Yep. So right now the, the system will essentially, it's, it's the last person to update or, or it's the creator of the, the workflow itself. So we've had a couple of customers that say, hey, well, I want to create the workflow, but I don't want it to come from me. Totally get that. You know, for some of our customers, right? Uh, maybe I'm the operational person that really understands uh, all the back end stuff and I create the workflow, but I never speak to tenants, right? Residents. Um, totally get that. So um, what I would say to that is, you know, it's as simple as toggling it on and toggling it off, right? So if you see here, I'm still sharing my screen. If I toggle it on, off, um, and then toggle a workflow back on, that actually is counts as me essentially being the last person to touch it. So maybe I can go in as an admin person who really has the, you know, the knowledge of creating all these workflows, but I don't want that message to come from me. I want that message to come from Joe. Then I just, as simple as Joe coming in, toggling that off, toggling it back on, or even just you saving it and him being the person that toggles it on because it will be the last person that touches it. Um, we've had a couple workarounds that, you know, if that really is an issue for someone, I don't want to get too far into the weeds, but it definitely is. There's some workarounds that can be creative in terms of, you know, maybe in that chat template itself, you tell the, the tenant, you know, maybe in italics, Hey, this is coming from an automated workflow, you know, so that there's maybe, you know, there's, some, there's other ideas there, but there's definitely some ways to, um, clarify any confusion and make sure that people are understanding what's, what's going on for sure. Yeah. Cool. Very good. And, uh, quick question um that when a vendor submits an invoice could we set a workflow to notify us just trying to understand how to use this function correct me if yep. i'm wrong here nate there is a uh a notification for um invoice submitted that they can receive an email is that right yeah i'm pretty sure that is yeah that's a notification okay. for sure yep so okay. it would be but you could have another layer of um yeah, exactly so i think it's a great point john is is you know there's so many things in property mail that are already automated especially around notifications 
And so there may be some things that are already happening that someone might go, oh, I want to create a workflow for that. And that's where I'd say, get with your customer success manager, get with our support team, ask that question. Hey, do I get, I can't find that, you know, that notification setting, like, where do I turn that on? Cause I really want to be getting that. Maybe you turned it off when you first got into property mail, you didn't realize it. And that would be a, in terms of like getting very granular with you and your, uh, settings inside of property meld. But for sure, if you're not getting that for any reason, or you want to get an additional one, you know, as a reminder, you can definitely have a workflow that would, you know, do that. Perfect. Um, off topic, but I have seen a couple uh, um, comments come through here and question about and about linking with Zapier. So uh, I do just want to just throw out there, we do have a read only um, um, open API. Uh, that reach out to that success team and they can go into further detail with that and, and all the all the things behind that that we can feed that information to the Zapiers just so you guys know. So, um, but Nate, thank you. I think we covered all of it. Hopefully our excitement didn't burn too fast through all of that, <laughs> but uh, um, just, a, I mean, it really is just kind of a, just a, peep on in, inside of how powerful these can be. Uh, it, it's pretty fun to get, you know, bombarded with questions and we are joking about it in the office here, but yeah, we've got a workflow for that. So the sky that's, really is the limit, you know, and that's what uh, the team is here to help you guys with. If you have specific use cases, do it. not hesitate to reach out to that support team um, and they can help you. Um, with that, uh, I want to introduce Caroline Oakley. She is the service manager from United Properties of, of Western Michigan. Uh, Caroline has been in the, came from the hospitality uh, industry uh, in 2020. Now with, with uh, United, um, she just is here to kind of give you guys all a real world, like real life experience on, on workflows. She's been, been using them and, and kind of changing the game for them. So Caroline, just give us, give us a little overview. How's it been going? Yeah. Thank you, John. Well, I must say you guys have done a lot of work. We've only been working with workflows for a couple of weeks now, and you guys have already created so many templates that I haven't had the chance to look at myself, but I'm excited to after this meeting. Um, we have been using Property Meld since about 2018, um, and the workflows are kind of changing the game for us. It is, we're realizing that there's a lot of things that we've been doing that can now be automated. Um, one of the biggest things that we started using uh, the workflows for is those triage questions. As we all know, tenants are not always the most detailed when they uh, submit work orders, you know, no key, or I got one the other day that just said help. I was like, okay, um, this is a really good start. What, what do you need help with? There's a lot of things. Um, so sending those, those triage questions has eliminated a lot of back and forth that we have with tenants, um, just asking those questions similar to the appliance um, workflow that we were, uh, Nate was working on earlier, getting those model and serial numbers that eliminates a communication that one of my team members has to send. Um, and so that's been super, super helpful to us and allowing um, things to run much smoother and much quicker because, you know, tenants submit work orders at any, or melds at any hour of the day. They submit one at 10 o'clock at night. They're getting that response immediately saying, Okay, this is what I need to know. That way, when my team comes in first thing, we already have that information. We're already working on it. We don't have to wait for the tenant. Um, I will say, you know, there's been a few things that my team has had questions on, and the team has been incredible, incredible to help us work through those. I have told pretty much everyone that I've talked to um, that I absolutely love the support team at Property Meld because the response times are impeccable. I don't know how they do it. I, I truly don't because sometimes I have an answer before I've even like, I haven't even had the chance to go on to the next thing yet. And I've already got my answer, which is amazing um, because we're already, always working on so many things. Um, the other thing, and I've, I'm learning even more during this call um, is the customization of it. There are so many options um, I don't 
No. Have you guys put in the or option yet? I know there's an and. It, it's it's coming. It's coming. So okay. the conditions, that was honestly, Caroline, that was my first question because I was like, ooh, it should be and or. Um, yes. But David, our CTO, he was very responsive to that as a success team. We came back the support team. And so it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very excited about that one too. Um, because I don't know if everybody kind of saw when, when Nate was creating those workflows, but when you put in what, what the tenant is saying, tenants don't always say what we, we would say or what we think that they would say, or, you know, okay. it doesn't always, their brains don't work the way, same way that ours do sometimes. And so the or option is going to be huge because they can submit certain things and it will, it will submit those triage questions or whatever you have that workflow set up to be. Um, so yeah, we've, it's been great and we're excited to kind of dive in further to see what all the capabilities are, because I think that we are just brushing the surface of it. Right. And, you know, I guess with just, just scratching the surface, literally, like you just said, have you noticed, like, have you seen a, a decrease in touch points? Like, are you, do you literally have more time in your day by the workflows that you've already implemented? Definitely. We, um, the amount of times that we are going into to work order, spending time going back and forth in the meld chat or um, spending time on the phone with tenants, because that can sometimes not just be a two minute conversation. It can be much, much longer. My team is eliminating the time that they're spending on the phone, which isn't necessarily reducing the customer experience by any means. It's creating a more efficient customer experience for for those, um, the customer, whether it's the owner or the tenant, we're getting owners answers faster. We're getting tenants answers faster, which means wow. they're happier. They're more satisfied with the service we're providing. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I'm excited to uh, be checking in here in a couple months when you really start unleashing the fury of workflows and see. see I know I'm going. excited to dive in. I'm going to, you know, tell my team, um, I'm, while I'm away for a couple of days, hey, can you guys dive into this and let me know what you come up with? I'm excited to to see all the capabilities for sure. Oh, that's awesome. And, you know, to Caroline's comment about our support team and the, and the rapid response, and I just have seen a barrage of the shout outs here. Uh, I, I, I use this when I'm presenting property meld. I will sit there and actually send a chat message uh, support question in the middle of the demo, you guys, it is a less than 10 second response time. They make my job so easy. It's, it's pretty, pretty awesome. And, and I just, I say that to again, reiterate, do not hesitate to reach out as you guys are building these workflows, questions come up. That's, that's what we're here to do. So um, real quick, there's just a couple more questions and Caroline, first, man, I'm jumping ahead, but uh, I want to thank you so much for just sharing your, your experience and, and jumping on with us that uh, that was really cool to hear. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. Um, so real quick, we're just going to run through a couple here. Daniel, um, is there a way to have auto response for melds based on the creation time? For example, a meld that comes in after hours may respond and say, call if it's an emergency. Meld is not monitored outside of business hours. Yeah. So uh, this actually brings me to the perfect point of, I mean, I was going to give a shout out to one of my customers who just, we got on a call, we did the training and they have turned on 30 workflows and wow. one of the workflows they have turned on is this one. So currently, um, and our de development team is working on this, but currently there's not a way to do it time-based or day-based, which I think would be really cool. Um, but what she said, and this is where I think it's it's all about perspective, right? Because I said, oh, I'm so sorry, you can't do it based on the day that it's created, right? Saturday, Sunday, right? The meld is created on Saturday or Sunday. Um, she said, oh, that's okay. I'll just turn the workflow on at 5 p.m. on Friday and turn the workflow off at you know 9 a.m. on Monday morning. Um, and so in that sense, yep, just turn that workflow on over the weekend and have that auto response for every single meld that's created while that workflow's on. Um, and, you know, again, just having an internal process, like she said, oh yeah, no problem. Yep. We'll just turn it on Friday evening, turn it off Monday morning. And she was super pumped because to answer your question, Daniel, that's, that's a huge thing for them is to be able to have their tenants have residents have that expectation of, Hey, it's the weekend. And my, you know, 
uh, and we don't work on the weekends, right? And so this is, this is what I should do. I'll wait till Monday or I'll call the fire department because it's a fire and I shouldn't be, you know, putting Melvin for that anyway. So I love it. Yeah. Caden, it's the shout outs to you, my man. That's, uh, that's awesome. So, <laughs> um, so a couple questions that are still kind of going in here. Can I add all the words of a Mel brief description in a single text box with commas? Or should I add a and for each different set of words? No, I think you, I think you want to do uh, an and. Yeah, you do. Yeah. But play around with it. I think as Adrian, Adrian, yeah, Adrian, play around with it and uh, let me know. Cause I, I haven't played with that specifically, but just to be sure I would put an and. Um, you, yeah. Um, and I've, I've had a few of these questions kind of come in. Um, as far as in, in regards to creating templates and, yeah. and things like that, like we can really help you guys with best practices and things like that. But I mean, there's, there's so many legalities behind everything. Um, you guys that you guys do have to create that template the, the first time, super, super easy. And then once it's in there, it's, it's good to go and they can show you. And again, the support team can help you guys with that. Um, but once you create that template, it's good to go. So you just gotta, you just gotta set up that first template. So um one more when they respond to that workflow asking for more pictures oh they're coming in hot here bear with me here. <laughs> uh for more pictures are they able to send it within the chat or must they send it another way yep currently the only way to add pictures is through the meld itself yep so it would just be a reminder for that tenant to go into their into that meld and attach that that picture, uh, which obviously they can still do through their phone though, right? So I cannot do it through text messaging, but I just pull my browser up and click add picture and it will actually open up my, my photos right there on my phone, so. Absolutely. Um, and then is there a way to test a workflow? Can I add myself as a, a fake resident and then put a new meld in to see the works? What What's your, I guess, um, what's your advice, you know, on yeah. testing these out? Yeah, you know, as a team, we've been playing around with this because we have we also have a production account, a property mail account, you know, that we do things in. And I would say, yeah, probably the easiest way is you can actually add yourself as a tenant and it'll give you the option to then switch between accounts. Um, just invite yourself. I won't again, not to get too far into the weeds, but uh, add yourself as a tenant. Use that email address that you use for property mail anyways and invite yourself as a tenant. And that'll give you the option to switch between tenant and your actual admin account. And then, yeah, I would say that's probably the easiest way to test it. Um, or you can ask us, honestly, reach out to support, reach out to your success manager, say, hey, I'm trying to do this, will it work? And that might be an easier way too. Like, like John said, our support team is insane. I also don't know how they do it. Um, they're very quiet and they're powerful and they're in, uh, it's unbelievable. So send them a chat message, say, hey, I'm trying to do this workflow. Uh, do you think it'll work? And then uh, they'll get back to you in probably seven yep. seconds. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, Julian, can I, you know, he's at, can have um, creating workflows, the power of workflow, right? Uh, process be automating from the assignment all the way down to getting the invoice. How much can be automated? Can I, can I having the process automated from beginning to end? The short answer is yeah. You can. Um, we haven't gotten all the way to, you know, a meld from start to finish, but we've got a workflow for that. So yep. absolutely every single step throughout the process, you can create workflows that are going to help automate the process for you guys. Um, and then any thoughts on property meld becoming an app rather than a website? We get it a lot. Um, I hear this all the time. And there's, there's a lot of, you know, from translations and apps don't translate to, you know, multiple apps for people to, you know, basically barriers of entry and, you know, we can go on and on and on and on. But right now there's, there's so many pros, believe it or not, to staying, staying web-based. And if it's a lot of times, it's just as simple as people are like, well, yeah, but for my, my team, I want them to have a tile on, on, on their phone. We can make it look exactly like an app for you guys or, or and show you exactly how to do that. So um, don't hesitate to reach out again to, to the support team. Um, is it possible to automatically cancel a reoccurring meld when the tagging is updated from vacant to occupied, for example? Can that be included in a workflow? 
So we we talked about this too, and I think uh, David, our CTO, was who kind of this was, you know, he came up with this idea, and really our development team. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to our development team. I cannot imagine the amount of work that went into making this possible, right? Like this is a huge, huge thing. Um, so currently, the actions are res- are restricted from doing, you know, things that you can't undo, essentially, right? Like you can't. Um, so completing and canceling a meld is not currently an option that, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that, you know, um, but that's just currently not an option. Um, but you can tag and untag based on certain parameters. So Hootie, I think, um, you know, again, I know we're currently in, in talks Hootie, so we can chat more a little later today, even in terms of like your specific use case, but the actions are, uh, available to tag and untag based on certain conditions for sure. Um, last one I I'm seeing here, is there a way a workflow closes a meld example? We go in and manually close snow removal melds, um, per storm within 24 hours to receive the feedback from the residents in a timely fashion. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, not currently available, uh, but I would definitely, you know, use the tagging, use the chat, right. Use some kind of functionality that's already available through the actions to bring that to the surface so someone on the team can just close it out. Perfect. Tagging in a safe filter. In a safe filter, exactly. Yep. I don't know if that's the actual Anatorby that's saying that or if that's Vanessa. It's, <laughs> it's one of the two of them. <laughs> uh, it's James. It's James. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, hey, um, let's give everybody... Uh, five minutes back in their lives. Uh, and if I don't, I'm not, I, the questions have kind of slowed down. Yeah, I'll, I'll end it with absolutely make sure that you guys reach out to your, to, to the success team support. They're, they're happy to help you guys with your individual questions. But before you leave, March 24th, I want to give a little teaser for uh, Beyond Maintenance. Um, beyond maintenance is going to, uh, let me hold on. Now I have to, Madison gave me exactly what this is going to be, or, and I was, I'm totally going to box it up here. So, um, Madison, can you just explain (laughs) systematic changes to prevent burnout? Thank you, Madison. That is going to be the topic on uh, March 24th. So be on the lookout for the registration link um, coming your guys' way. And then one more thing um, that makes me pretty dang excited to be announcing um, is our second annual user summit right here in our brand new headquarters in Rapid City, South Dakota. That's going to be August 9th through the 11th. so be on the lookout for that registration as well. Uh, come check out the beautiful Black Hills, actually in the summertime when it's not 24 degrees out or negative five for that matter. Uh, and we're going to, you know, get, get a chance to be face to face with the development team, the support team. I'll be running around, I'm sure. But uh, it, it we had a tremendous turnout and amazing um, feedback from last year's. So uh, I encourage everybody, it, it's going to be a great experience. So August 11th, 9th through the 11th, User Summit, and March 24th, Beyond Maintenance. So thank you, everybody. Uh, it's a true honor to be on these things and, and share all the exciting things that are changing here at Property Meld. Uh, an, another th- huge thank you to Caroline for jumping on and my man, Nate. I think we don't have to be future BFFs anymore. You, you, thank you so right. much for uh, you heard everything. You here first. <laughs> here. So everybody have a great rest of your day and goodbye for now.